Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of One of Us Is Lying by Karen M. McManus. So I actually picked this book up, I knew it was a booktube darling and a lot of people love it here on booktube. Um, and my girlfriend was getting rid of a bunch of books and this was one of them so I thought I'd pick it up and check it out. It's kind of like a YA thriller, a bit like The Breakfast Club, a bunch of kids in a, det a detention, one of them dies. Um, I'm going to go through and uh, I'm going to start by reading the blurb, then I'm going to check out my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Five students walk into detention, only four leave alive. Yale hopeful Bronwyn has never publicly broken a rule. Sports star Cooper only knows what he's doing in the baseball diamond. Bad boy Nate is one misstep away from a life of crime. Prom queen Addie is holding together the cracks in her perfect life. An outsider Simon, creator of the notorious gossip app at Bayview High, won't ever talk about any of them again. He dies 24 hours before he can post their deepest secrets online. Investigators conclude it's no accident. All of them are suspects. Everyone has secrets, right? What really matters is how far you'll go to protect them. So let's check out some tabs. It's all written in the present tense, uh, which I am not a fan of. So this is interesting from Cooper, uh, the baseball player. And by the way, most of the entries are uh, titled by the character of whose point of view they're from and then given with a date and time. Sometimes it's hard to actually tell the difference between the characters, but this is a first novel as well, so I think she was still getting used to writing in such a way that the characters, you know, really came across. Anyway, Cooper, he says, My hand hurts within minutes. It's pathetic, I guess, but I can't remember the last time I wrote anything longhand. Plus, I'm using my right hand, which never feels natural, no matter how many years I've done it. My father insisted I learn to write right-handed in second grade after he first saw me pitch. Your left arm's gold, he told me. Don't waste it on crap that don't matter. Which is anything but pitching as far as he's concerned. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so we get this. A lot of people think Jake and I have been sleeping together since freshman year, but that's not true. He wanted to wait until after junior prom. It was a big deal. Jake rented a fancy hotel room that he filled with candles and flowers and bought me amazing lingerie from Victoria's Secret. How is this kid affording all of this? There's a reference to Bromwyn reading uh, Ulysses by James Joyce because it's number one on the Modern Library's 100 Best Novels and she wants to finish it before the semester's over. And then, uh, yeah, Nate rides a motorcycle. Again, maybe it's, it's just a very different high school experience to what I had in secondary school. Um, I don't even think we were legal, legally allowed to drive, stuff like that. And most people couldn't have afforded it even if they'd wanted to. And then I got bad vibes from Jake because he, uh, he looks at her clothes, uh, Adeline's, Adeline's, Addison's, whatever her name is, her clothes. He goes, you're wearing that, Ads? Um, I'll, it'll be cold at the beach. I'll keep you warm. Put on something a little cuter, huh? And I have watched enough episodes of My Love and My Killer and Meet, Marry, Murder to know that is not good. That is controlling coercive behaviour, or at least the early signs of it. And they're talking about uh, Halloween costumes and we get the line, Typical guy, you have no idea how hard it is to find a costume that's sexy but not slutty. And then someone replies, just be slutty then. I did like this though. Uh, so who is it? Is it Adeline? Bromwyn, that's the one. Her and Nate sort of start to hook up. Um, sometimes we don't talk at all. Last night he suggested we watch a movie and we both logged into Netflix and watched a god awful horror movie he picked until 2 in the morning. I fell asleep with my earbuds still in and might have snored in his ear at some point. And I just thought that was very cute, the idea of what, them watching the same movie at the same time and chatting about it on the phone. Must do that with my girlfriend at some point. Alright, so Addie is thinking about her ex-boyfriend. She's going to go to a party. Um, she goes, if I was going to the party tonight, I'd have to wear something he picked out, stay as late as he wanted and not talk to anyone who might make him mad. I miss him still, I do, but I don't miss that. Dude, you are being controlled by a coercive and abusive boyfriend. Okay, Bronwyn. So Jake says, cheating isn't a mistake, it's a choice. Which it is, I would argue. Okay, so Bronwyn again. So she's on the phone with Nate, half watching Battle Royale, which is, which is a lot better than a lot of the movies Nate likes. Well, it is, it's a great movie. Great book as well. So uh, Bronwyn again here. And she uses the word telenovela, which not only, I think I've heard that twice in my entire life within specialist writing uh, circles. I just don't think a teenager would know or use that word. And speaking of choices, Cooper's dad uh, thinks that because Cooper is gay, that was a choice, which as we all know, it is not. And so we're back to Addie here. And uh, this conversation between her and her, her mum, I think is a very realistic conversation. I think a lot of people have sort of felt this kind of pressure from their parents and it's not good. I'm not looking for another boyfriend, mum. She stares at me like I've sprouted wings and started speaking Chinese. Why on earth not? It's been ages since you and Jake broke up. I spent more than three years with Jake. I could use some downtime. I say it mostly to argue, but as soon as the words come out of my mouth, I know they're true. My mother started dating when she was 14, like me, and hasn't stopped since. Even when it means going out with an immature man-boy who's too cowardly to bring her home to his parents. I don't want to be that afraid to be alone. 
Don't be ridiculous, that's the last thing you need. Have a few dates with a boy like TJ, even if you're not interested and other boys at school might see you as desirable again. You don't want to end up on a shelf, Adelaide. Some sad single girl who spends all her time with that odd group of friends you've got now. If you'd wash that nonsense out of your hair, grow it a little and wear makeup again, you could do much better than that. I don't need a guy to be happy, Mum. Of course you do, she snaps. You've been miserable for the past month. Because I was being investigated for murder, I remind her, not because I'm single. So anyway, one of us is lying by Karen M. McManus. Um, there was a twist at the end when the big reveal comes, but I think it's pretty obvious, at least it was to me. Um, I don't like the fact that it's written in the present tense as well, that is kind of annoying. Um, and it does definitely read like a first novel. That's not to say it's a bad thing, I just don't think it's as good as it could have been. Overall, it was alright. Uh, in my written review I gave it a 3 out of 5, but I think since, I, I mean I've read the sequel to it and I enjoyed the sequel more. So I think I'm going to bump it up to a weak 3.5 out of 5. Read it if you want to. Um, and I believe there's a movie of it, so maybe I should watch that. So there we have it, that's what I made of One of Us Is Lying. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye